Nilikuwa nawaambia kazi za kitume. I was telling you the apostolic works. Ni kazi zenye neema. These are works full of grace. Lakini zina ugumu wake pia. But also they have their difficulties. Biblia inasema The Bible says Paulo na kundi yote Paul with the whole group. Walikuwa sasa wanajiandaa kwenda kwenye safari ya Troas. Now they were getting ready to go to a city of Troas. Lakini usiku But at night Fikiria usiku mumesha andaa sijui siku hizo hapakuwa ndege wangekuwa wameshalipa ticket. Think about this at night you've already prepared everything by then they didn't have flights probably they would have already been paid for the flights. Na kesho asubuhi kiongozi awambie kwamba safari inabadilika. And tomorrow morning the leader tells you now the trip has changed. Yenye mtajisikiaje? How would you feel? Mbona kiongozi wetu hana msimamo? How come our leader has no stand? Anabadilisha badilisha vitu bila mpangilio. He keeps changing things anyhow. Lakini nashukuru watu hao. But I'm grateful for this people. Walielewa kwamba unavyoongozwa na roho. They understood that when you're led by the spirit. Unaenda katika emergency za kimungu. Then you can go into God's emergencies. Akapata maono usiku. And he got a vision at night. Na kulikuwa na mtu. And there was a man. Akamwambia kwenye ndoto hiyo. And he told him in that dream. Tunaomba. We are asking. Muje huku kwenye mji wa Makedonia. Please come to the city of Macedonia. Muje mtusaidie. Come and help us. Unajua usiku mara nyingi you know, at night, many a times, unaweza ukatembelewa na malaika you could be visited by angels lakini ili ujumbe wa Mungu ukubalike but in order for the message of God to be accepted and received malaika anaweza katumia sura ya mtu unayemfahamu the angel can use the face of a person that you know nakumbuka siku moja i remember one day tulikuwa tumemaliza huo mkutano we had finished that conference ya hapo washington at washington na nimeenda richmond and i had gone to richmond nilikuwa nimechoka sana I was so tired. Nikaa nasikia mgongo wote umevunjika. I would feel that my whole back is so painful. Nilikuwa kitandani. And I was lying on the bed. Nalia sana. Crying. Sasa nasema itakuweje Mungu. And I said now God how is this going to be? Na sikuwa na uhakika nilienda na insurance card. And I didn't I wasn't sure that I carried my insurance card. Lakini usiku but at night. Nikajikuta niko mahali hapa. I found myself here. Na eneo fulani ya kanisa. And at the certain area of the church. Imegeuka hospitali. It has changed into an hospital. Na nikaona niko na papa. And I saw myself with papa. Na nikaona mtu mmoja wa kanisa hili. And I saw one person of this church. Amegeuka daktari. That person became a doctor. Alafu tukaingia kwenye pazia. And we entered behind the curtain. Na wakaniambia wanaenda kunigonga sindano ya diclofenac. And they told me that they were going to inject me a diclofenac injection. Kweli wakanigonga sindano ya diclofenac. And indeed they injected me. Nilivoamka ni mzima kabisa. I was fit completely. Nikasema haya ni maombi ya watakatifu. Nikasema these are the prayers of the saints. Bwana asifiwe. Praise the Lord. Bwana asifiwe. Praise the Lord. Kwa hiyo Paulo aliona ndoto. Therefore Paul saw a vision a, a dream. An angel. Amevaa kama watu wa Makedonia. Was dressed up like people from Macedonia. Anamwambia njoo. And he was telling njo. him come Utusaidie. Come and help us. Tunakuhitaji. We need you. Hebu fikiria. Think about this. Sisi tunajua. We know. Malaika an angel. Ni watu wenye nguvu. These are powerful people. Sisi tunawaalika. We invite them. Watusaidie. That they may help us. Sasa fikiria Paulo. Now think about this Paul. Alikuwa amefika kiwango cha namna gani? He was at what level? Badala ya malaika kumsaidia, wao wanamuita njoo tusaidie. They are calling him come and help us. Hizo ndio kazi zinazokusubiri. Those are the works that are waiting. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Malaika and angel. Wanamwambia Paulo. They are telling Paul. Mtu kama wewe na mimi. Person like you and I. Njoo Makedonia. Come to Macedonia. Mji wa Makedonia unakusubiri. The city of Macedonia is waiting. Njoo tusaidie. Come and help us. Bwana asifiwe. Praise the Lord. Ipokee kwa jina la Yesu. Receive it in Jesus. Ndipo walipoelekea Makedonia. And that's when they went to Macedonia. Unajua mara nyingi you know many a times, Mungu atakwambia neno. God will tell you a word. Lakini hata kupa details zote. He will not give you all the details. Walijua kuna kazi na wasubiri Makedonia. They knew there was a work that awaits them in Macedonia. Lakini hawakujua rasmi watafanya nini huko Makedonia. They did not know exactly what they were going to do. Wao wakatii tu. They just obeyed. Wakaenda Makedonia. They went to Macedonia. Mji huo that city ulikuwa umejaa vitu vingi sana. Biblia 
inasema waliubiri injili they preached the gospel na watu wakaipokea injili and people received the gospel na kulikuwa na mama anaitwa Lydia and there was a woman called Lydia alivyosikia mahubiri ya Paulo when she heard the preachings of Paul akabarikiwa sana she was really blessed akabatizwa and she was baptized yeye na nyumba yake her together with her family ndipo huyo Lydia that's when Lydia akamwomba Paulo requested Paul kama nimepata kibali if i found favor naomba mkae nyumbani kwangu please stay at my home hiyo ndio nampenda Mungu that's how it is to love God akikupa vision anakupa provision if he gives you a vision he gives you a provision tayari walikuwa wamepata mahali pa kukaa they had already secured a place to stay katika safari hiyo in that journey ambia mwenzako tell your neighbor kwenye maono in vision kuna provision there is provision Mungu akikwambia kitu if God tells you something usijiulize mengi don't ask yourself many yeye atakata njia he will make a way ataandaa mioyo ya watu mshangilie bwana yesu shout unto the lord amen wakakaa kwenye nyumba ya Lydia so they stayed in Lydia's house huko walikuwa wakiomba they were praying while there siku zote wanaomba na biblia inasema and the bible says siku moja one day walipokuwa wanaelekea kwenye nyumba ya maombi as they were going into the house of prayer wakakutana na kijakazi they met with this damsel kilikuwa kina roho ya utambuzi this girl had a spirit of deviation nataka uelewe mji huo ulikuwa unatawaliwa na nini i want you to understand what exactly was ruling over that city hicho kijakazi kilikuwa na roho ya utambuzi she had the spirit of deviation na kilikuwa na connection and she had connection na wakuu wa mji huo with the mighty men of that city na wafanyabiashara wa mji huo and the businessmen of that city na biashara yao ilikuwa ni nini and what was their business kuteka akili za mji was to capture the understanding of the city kuteka mawazo ya mji to capture the ideas and the thoughts na of the city and everyone wasimjue mungu they may not be able to know ili waende huko so that they may go there aweze kuatabiria that he may be able to prophesy on them lakini wasijue kwamba but without knowing wanavotabiriwa na roho ya kishetani as she is prophesying on them in demonic power wanavamiwa kwenye akili their minds are being taken away Hivi unajua unavoenda kwenye watu hao? Do you know when you visit these people? Tayari unakuwa ni mtumwa. You are already a slave. Kila kitu unataka kuwauliza. Everything you want to depend on them. Nifanyeje? What can I do? Nipite wapi? Where should I go? Unavozidi kwenda huko? As you keep going there. Akili yako inavamiwa. Your understanding is being taken away. yako yanavamiwa. Your thoughts are taken away. Yaani kwa kifaransa wanasema amvutma unakuwa yani ume umetekwa. You become a slave. You are capt- a captive you become a captive possessed Kwa hiyo walikuwa wanazifanya kazi hizo So they were doing this Na mji wote ulikuwa umevamiwa na hiyo kitu And the whole city was under that influence Uone shetani alivyo mbaya See how bad the devil is Shetani alivyo mjanja How cunning the devil is Paulo alivyokuja When Paul came Na timu yake With his team Na roho wa Mungu And the spirit of God Wanaelekea maombi They were going to pray kile kijakazi that damsel kikaelewa kwamba understood that hawa watu these people wanaenda kutunyanganya clients they are here to take away what we have kwa hiyo shetani anajigeuza moja kwa moja so the devil would just transform himself completely. na kwanza kusema maneno ambayo and to start to say the words ni kama ya encouragement that they are like the words of encouragement uone shetani alivomjanja see how cunning the devil is kikaanza kwenda nyuma yao and that damsel started to go after na kuambia them. hao watu and to tell the people now sikilizeni sikilizeni listen 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 hawa ni watu wa Mungu wenye nguvu these are powerful men of god watumishi wa Mungu walie hai these are the servants of the living god muasikilize listen to them maana wanatuambia maneno because they are telling us the words ya wokovu the words of salvation watumishi wa Mungu wenye nguvu so these are powerful men of god watumishi wa Mungu walie hai the, 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 the servants of the living god muasikilize listen to them labda ingekuwa mimi na wewe if it was you and i Tungesema huyu ni mwenzetu. We we'll say ah this is our partner. Njoo kwenye timu. Please join us. Na paza sauti sana. And then continue to shout even more. Ili watu wasikilize. So that people may listen to us. Ndugu acha nikwambie. Let me tell you dear one. Mtu anaweza kusema maneno mazuri. Somebody can say good words. Lakini roho iliyo nyuma ya hayo maneno mazuri ni roho ya kishetani. But the spirit behind the good words is the devilish spirits. 
Ndivyo shetani anavyotumika. That's how the devil works. Anajigeuza malaika wa nuru. He transform himself as the angel of light. Hawa ni watumishi wa Mungu. These are the servants of God. Mungu aliye hai. The living God. Mwasikilize. Listen to them. Siku ya pili. The second day. Siku ya tatu. The third day. Nashukuru Mungu. I'm so thankful unto Paulo God. alikuwa mtu wa kiroho. Paul was a spiritual man. Labda ingekuwa mimi na wewe. If it was you and I. Tungesikia wanavyotuinua. The way we would, if we would have heard the way they would praise us. Kweli, sisi ni watumishi wa Mungu wenyewe. And we would say, yeah, indeed we are the servants of the most living. Na unavosema hivyo. And you can say so. Ujua unavamiwa na wewe. Without knowing that you are also being possessed. Anaendelea. Continue. Anaendelea. Continue. Anazipaza hizo roho. She was just spreading those spirits. Wavamia watumishi wa Mungu. So that they may invade the servants of God. Na kuwavamia watu. And also to invade the people huu, of that city. Kuzuia kusudi la Mungu. To stop the will of God. Ambia mwenzako uwe makini siku zote. Tell your neighbor be very careful every day. Ambia mwenzako. Tell your neighbor Nyoma ya kila neno lazima ujue ni roho wa Mungu ama ni roho wa shetani. Behind every word you must be able to know whether it's the spirit of God or it's the spirit of the devil. Ilivyopita muda when the time passed by. Roho wa Mungu ndani ya Paulo akaanza kunukuumia. The spirit of God inside Paul started to be troubled. Na akajua kwamba hii si roho wa Mungu. And he knew that this is not the spirit of God. Akamgeukea huyo kijakazi. He turned into that damsel. Na akamwambia. And he told her. Katika jina la Yesu. In the name of Jesus. Mtoke huyo. Get out of this lady. Hapo hapo akaanguka. Right there she fell. Hiyo roho hiyo pepo ikamtoka. That demon departed. Shangilie bwana Yesu. Shout unto Jesus. Kufunguliwa kwa huyo kijakazi the deliverance of that damsel kulikuwa na faida sana katika ulimwengu wa roho so profitable in the spirit world na yeye alimwona Mungu and she saw god pamoja na kwamba alikuwa mchawi with the fact that she was practicing the spirit of the devil lakini zaidi but i so much believe kufunguliwa kwa huyo kijakazi her deliverance ilikuwa ina mahusiano na kufunguliwa kwa muji wa makedonia it also had connection with the deliverance of the city of macedonia mana wakuwa anga wanatumika na watu kama hao the principalities have been used by such people na wanatumika na wakuu wa inchi hao they are being used by the leaders of that nation ndipo wale wakuu waliokuwa nafanya biashara and that's when those great men who were doing business wakasema biashara yetu inaharibika they say oh now our business has been destroyed wakaenda wakaconnect na magistrates now they went and connected with the magistrates of that, huu. of that city kasema kumeingia watu so they told the magistrates that the people have come in wanaleta uharibifu these people are bringing destruction ndani ya mji wetu in our city Lazima wasimamishwe. Now we must stop them. Unaziona hizo kazi za kitume. You see the works of apostolic works. Utaanza kujua kwamba unaleta mguso. You will start to know that you're bringing impact. Wakati watu wanaanza kutungia maneno ya ajabu sio ya jua. When people are starting to speak some strange words against you. Utakavyoona hayo. Once you see that. Ujue kwamba mmeanza kuigusa ulimwengu wa giza. You should know that now you've started to touch the world of God. Na usiogope hayo yote yatakayotokea. And don't be afraid when all these things are happening. Kwa sababu Mungu aliyekutuma Makedonia God who has sent you to me to come. Hata kuwa na wewe. He shall be with you. Hata kuacha. He will not leave Hata you. Hata kupungukia. He will not forsake you. Maneno yakikuibukia. If the words rise against Mungu you. Mungu atakuwa na mpango na maneno hayo. God will have a plan with those words. Hallelujah. 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 Ndipo akawakamata. And this when they got hold waka of them. Wakawapiga, wakawapiga. And they beat them and beat them. Na wakawatia gerezani. And they locked them in jail. Labda ingekuwa mimi na wewe. If it was you and I. Ndipo tungeanza kulia. That's when we would have started crying. Uko wapi Mungu wetu? Where are you our God? Kwa nini umeniacha? Why have you forsaken Kwanini us? Kwa nini mateso hayo? Why all this suffering? Lakini Paulo na Sila. But Paul and Silas. Hawakujali wako gerezani. They didn't care that they are in prison. Biblia inasema. The Bible says ilipofika midnight when it was at midnight ilipofika saa sita za usiku it was at midnight wakaanza kuomba they started to pray wakaanza kumwimbia mungu they started to sing unto the lord they started to praise the lord wakaanza kuomba they started to pray wakamtukuza mungu gerezani they glorified god in hallelujah. the hallelujah 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 maana walijua because they knew hata gerezani makusudi ya mungu hayafungwi even in the prison the, the will of Sema god amina. will still prevail 
Hata gerezani. Even in prison. Makusudi ya Mungu yatatimia. The will of God shall still be fulfilled. Hata wewe inawezekana uko gerezani. It is also possible you are in prison. Lakini leo. But today. Makusudi ya Mungu yanaenda kutimia. The will of God is going to be fulfilled. Ndani ya maisha yako. In your life. Walivyoanza kuomba. When they started to pray. Wakamtukuza Mungu. And glorified God. Biblia inasema. The Bible says. Ghafla all of a sudden there was such a great shake in that prison i don't know if you know what earthquake is but people who are in haiti and those countries that usually face this they can understand when the bible says that there was such a great earthquake katika tetemeko kubwa in that great earthquake nyumba zinavunjika houses crumble down nyumba zinabomoka houses crumble down na zile nyumba ambazo hazianguki and those houses that don't fall down zinaharibika they get cracks biblia inasema the bible says walivyokuwa na tetemeko hiyo when when they were in that tremor misingi the foundation ya gereza of the prison ikatetemeka they were shaken Misingi ya gereza. The foundation of the prison. Ikatetemeka. It was shaken. Hiyo ilikuwa ni ishara. That was a sign. Ya ukombozi wa Mungu. Of the deliverance of God. Shetani anaweza kukutia kwenye gereza. The devil can lock you in prison. Lakini watu wa Mungu wakaingia. But if the people of God come in. Na kuomba. And pray. Hiyo misingi ya gereza. The foundation of the prison. kutetemeka. Started to shake. Bwana asifiwe. Praise the Lord. Bwana asifiwe. Praise the Lord. Naomba Mungu wa mbinguni. I'm asking God of heaven. Misingi ya gereza yako that this foundation of your prison. Itikisike siku ya leo. Should be shaken today. Maana hiyo ni njia ya uhuru wa Bwana. Because that is the way of the Lord's freedom. Lakini haikuishia hapo. But it did not end there. Misingi ilivyotikisika. When the foundations were shaken. Biblia inasema hatua ya pili. The Bible says the second step. Milango ikafunguka. The doors were open. Milango ya gereza ikafunguka. And the doors of the prison were Naomba open. Naomba Mungu wa mbinguni. I'm asking the God of heaven. Milango ya gereza zote ifunguke siku ya leo. The doors of every prison be open today. Amen. Milango ya shaba. Those doors of brass. Iliyofungwa which were really locked kwa nguvu sana they were so locked with many locks ikapomoka ikafunguka they just swung open wana sio kwa ufunguo wa mwanadamu not by the key of human beings ikafunguka kwa ajili ya mungu they swung open because of the power of god lakini kitu cha kushangaza but something amazing milango ilikuwa wazi the doors were open lakini wafungwa but the prisoners walikuwa wamefungwa na minyororo kwenye miguu. They were bound with chains on their feet. Ninaamini I believe katika mji huo in that city. Wafungwa walikuwa wanatoroka sana. The prisoners were escaping a lot. Na ndio maana pamoja na kuwekwa gerezani That's why with the fact that they were still in prison bado walikuwa wanaweza kuwafunga na minyororo. Still they would chain them with chains. Ili wasitoroke so that they may not escape. Ili wakae huko ndani so that they may keep staying inside. Sasa maneno ya, ya leo ni kwamba Now the words of today are these. Hata kama mlango uko wazi even if the door is open. Kama macheni na kufunga minyororo na kufunga miguu. If your feet are still under chains. Bado huwezi kutoka. You can still not go out. Biblia inasema The Bible says Yesu ndiye mlango Jesus is the door Yesu anaweza kuwa amekuokoa Yes Jesus would have saved you Mlango wa gereza uko wazi The door of the prison is open Ni wewe mwenyewe kuchukua uamuzi It is up for you to make a decision Wakutoka katika hiyo gereza Go out of that prison Lakini utatokaje But how will you do so Kama minyororo bado imekufunga Because the chains are still binding you Hiyo ndio shida That is the problem Tuna ishara ya uhuru We have the sign of victory Lakini minyororo bado imetufunga miguu. The chains are still binding our feet. Yo. Hebu tuongee kwanza kwenye hiyo minyororo. Let's talk about the chains first. Na tuone minyororo inavyofunguka watu wanafanya nini. And let's see when the chains have been loosened. What do people do? Nilivyokuwa nasali when I was praying. Roho wa Mungu akaniambia. The spirit of God told me. 
Sio watu ambao hawajaokoka tu wamefungwa. It is not about only those who are not born again that Hata are bound. Hata watu waliookoka even the born again. Bado wanaweza kuwa na minyororo kwenye miguu yao. They can still be having chains on their feet. Na roho wa Mungu akaniambia. And the spirit of God told me. Kuhusu mnyororo wa dhambi. Concerning the chain of sin. Umeokoka. You're born again. Lakini kamba iliyokuwa inafunga miguu. But that rope that was tying your feet. Ya dhambi. Of sin. Bado inakufunga. It is still tying you down Kuna watu wengi wameokoka There are many people who are born again Lakini bado wanatenda dhambi But they're still sinning Ndio unaona baadaye wanarudi nyuma That's why you see some later on their back slide Maana hawezi kuendelea mbele sana Because they cannot go very much far Miguu imefungwa bado Their feet are still in chains Mnyororo wa dhambi The chain of sin ni mbaya sana. It is so bad. Utakuwa umeokoka. Yes, you would be born again. Lakini bado wewe ni mtumwa. But you're still a slave. Maana hauna uhuru wote. Because you don't have full freedom. Ni maajabu sana. This is amazing. Nimesoma katika Zaburi ya 51. I read from the book of Psalms 51. Nikaona baada ya Daudi kutenda dhambi. And I saw that after David had sinned. Alipokuwa anamlilia Mungu. When he was crying unto the Lord. Nirudishie furaha. I said restore the joy of ya my salvation. Unisaidi. Say help me. Uivute hatia ya dhambi zangu. To remove that condemnation of my sin. Na unitolee hukumu ya kumwaga damu. And take away that uh, that condemnation of shedding of the blood. Kuna kitu fulani alikisema kikaniogopesha sana. There is something that he said that really Mstari wa 8. Me in verse 8. Daudi akasema and David said Unirudishie furaha ya wokovu wangu. Restore the joy of my salvation. Ili na hiyo mifupa yangu iliyoiponda ponda. So that my crushed bones iweze kufurahi. May be able to rejoice. My crushed bones mifupa iliyopondwa pondwa ya kwangu. Nimeshangaa sana. I was really Unajua, surprised. Unajua nilikuwa sijaelewa kwa nini Isaya alitabiri kwamba na mifupa yake haitavunjwa. I did not understand why Isaiah prophesied about Jesus that in his bones shall never never any, any of his bones shall never be broken. Nimeona gisi Yesu alipigwa. I've seen how Jesus was beaten. Nimeona gisi damu zake zilimwagika. I've seen how his blood was shed. Walimfanyia kila kitu kiwezekanavyo. They did all they could do against him. Lakini hawakuruhusiwa kumvunja mifupa. But they were not allowed to break his bones. Kwa nini? Why? Dhambi ndio inavunja mifupa. Sin is the one that breaks the bonds. Ndugu tuogope Mungu. Let us fear God. Na kila ukitenda dhambi, and every time when you sin, ujue kwamba mifupa yako inavunjwa na Mungu. You should know that your bonds have been broken by God. Na dhambi inavunja mifupa. And sin breaks the bonds. Na mifupa ndio nguvu ya mwanadamu. And the bonds this is the power of a human being. Hata ukiumia nyama misule, even if your your your, your flesh is hard. Kwa wale wanaofanya mazoezi, for those who are doing exercise. Unajua kisu unaumia misule kiumi. You know how your muscles are hurt when your heart. Sasa fikiria mifupa Now think about it that your bone is broken. Utalia. You will weep. Hawezi kucheka tena. You cannot laugh anymore. Hawezi kufurahi tena. You cannot be joyful Mfupa anymore. Mfupa moja tu. Just one bone. Hata ikiwa ni wa kidole. Even if it's of your finger. Ukivunjwa. If it is broken. Unaanza mateso. You start to be in suffering. Unaanza kuumia. You start to be pain, pain. Now think about it. Daudi anasema. David is saying. Na mifupa yangu uliyoisaga sana. And my crushed bone. Uliyoivunjwa. The ones that you have crushed. Kwa kile dhambi. Because of sin. Na kumwaga damu. And the shade of the blood. Mungu nisaidie. God help Mungu ni okoe. God save me. Na mifupa hii. And this bond. Iweze kupata tena furaha ya maisha. May be able to get again the joy of life. Ndio maana unaona. That's why you see. Wa Kristo wa leo. Today's Christians. Hawana nguvu za kiroho tena. They don't have spiritual power anymore. Kwa sababu mifupa yao ilishavunjwa. Because their bones are already broken. Wanatembea lakini hawatembei. They walk but they don't walk. Hawafike mbali. They don't get far. Dhambi inavunja mifupa. Sin breaks the bonds. Ni kifungo. This is one of the Dunia inaweza kwa isielewe. The world cannot understand. Lakini Mungu anajua. But God knows. Kila ukitenda dhambi, every time when you see, umejiingiza kwenye kifungo. You've entered yourself. Na mifupa to be bound and the bonds inavunjika. I've been broken. Ndio maana. That's why. 
Tuwe makini. Let us be careful. Tuwe na hofu za Mungu. May we fear God. Mlango wa wokovu uko wazi. The door of salvation is open. Je, but minyororo imevunjika. Are the chains loosened? Minyororo wa dhambi. The chain of sin. Nikwambie. Let me tell you. Biblia inasema katika Yohana 8. The Bible says in the book of John chapter Wamba, 8 that. Mtenda dhambi ni mtumwa. A sinner is a slave. Ni mtumwa wa dhambi. Is a slave to sin. 34 hadi 36. to 36. Kila dhambi unayoitenda Every sin that you commit inakufunga chain it binds it, it binds it puts on a chain inakufunga chain it puts on another chain sasa unakuwa mtumwa now you become a slave na hatujaitwa kuwa watumwa and we were not called to be slaves tumeitwa kuwa huru we've been called to be free na kuna hukumu ya kila dhambi and there is judgment for every sin na si ile hukumu ya mwisho we're not talking about the last judgment kila mtu anachopanda Eh, whatsoever a man soweth so shall you reap so let's be very careful as we continue to walk in salvation we shall start to have the fear of God and to fear sin knowing that sin will break your bones and it will put a chain around you you will not accept to do it easily I was really surprised. Unajua Mungu. You know God. Mungu ni mwenye haki kwa watu wote. God is a righteous God to all. Hata kwa Wamisri. Even to the Egyptians. Musa, Moses. Alivomwaga damu ya Mumisri. When he shed the blood of the Egyptian. Na kwenda kuificha. And he went and tried to hide the body. Huo. To hide the body. Lakini kwa kuwa alimwaga damu. But because he had shed the blood. Akawa mtumwa. He became a slave. Akakimbia kwa hofu and he ran away because of fear. Fear. Hofu. Hofu. Fear. Ni mnyororo. Is a chain. Utakufunga. It will bind you. It will tie you up. katika mstakabali wa maisha yako. So you may not be able to enter into your future. Na huo mnyororo and that chain. Ulimpeleka katika hatia. Let him to be guilty. Katika jangwa. In the wilderness. Sikiliza. Listen. Maloya walioko mahali hapa. The lawyers who are here in this place. Mtu akiufanya uuaji, if somebody kills, anakatiwa hatia ya namna gani? Anakatiwa hukumu ya namna gani? What is his condemnation? What is his Mr. judgment? Mtu aka, akaonekana alifanya uuaji. If somebody was caught killing or he was uh, they knew that this guy killed, what is the judgment? Hukumu yake inakuwa nini? Eh? Death kifo life sentence life sentence simama utuambie vizuri just stand up and tell us very well what is the judgment of such a person life sentence death this guy is a killer how do you judge anaonekana ameua they they've proved that he has killed msaidie microphone msaidie microphone papa the sentence may be life life sentence he will be he will be killed himself also he will be killed also wewe anasema hukumu inaweza ikawa kifungo cha maisha ambayo ni sawa sawa ameshauawa maana hatoki tena jela katika katika zile sheria za international wanaua ama wanafunga mtu in the international laws do they kill or they give life sentences no in inter, in international law they do not kill life sentence katika sheria za international hawakubali mtu kuuawa hata kama alimwaga damu so in the international law they do not accept anybody to be killed even if the person has shed the blood wanamkatia hukumu they will just judge him ufungwa maisha yote and give him a life sentence je hiyo hukumu now that judgment inaeneza miaka ngapi wanavyosema how many years does it take the remainder of his life huh? Yes. Yes. Yaani maisha yake yote atakuwa jela huyo mtu. Anasema mpaka maisha yote huyo mtu atakufia gerezani. Means all of his life he will be staying in jail. Kuna mwingine lawyer iko mahali hapa? Any other lawyer who is in this place? Charity uko hapa? Charity. Life sentence ni 
mpaka huyo mtu atakufa milele au kuna maneno mengine anaweza akasema uh, life sentences until this guy dies in jail or there are other things that they can talk about kuna wanaweza kumkatia can they at least give him some years in jail or what it, it depends on the country but usually it's a long time and depending on the country they can reduce it to how many years it depends maybe 30 40 50 it depends on the country lakini in general um it, it could be let's say like 30 years 30 to 40 years is a life sentence au wanaangalia umri wa huyo mtu pia do they check on the age um sometimes but even if you're old you get a 50 year sentence it's a life sentence you die sikiliza kwa hiyo hata kama hata kama ukiwa mzee unapigwa miaka 50 jela utaishia tu huko huko hata kama wakipunguza sana sana miaka 40 utafungwa labda sasa hizo miaka 60 nilivyopata ufunuo huu nilienda kuongea na lawyers ili nielewe kabisa so when i got that revelation i went to see the lawyer so that i could understand wanasema kulingana na miaka kama mtu anakuanzia miaka 25 kupanda they say according to the years if somebody starts 25 and above kwenye nchi zingine in other countries life sentence Unaposema unafungwa maisha unafungwa mpaka utakufa siku kwenye gereza hiyo You are locked in jail until you die in that cell Lakini kwa wengine But in other countries wanaita wanaita ni life sentence They call it as life sentence au kifungo cha maisha Lakini wanaweza kukatia miaka 40 But they can give you 40 years Kwa nini Why Kama una miaka kuanzia 25 30 40 Wanaasume kwamba The assumption is ukikatiwa miaka 40 if they lock you for 40 years baada ya miaka 40 after 40 years una miaka 80 years nguvu ya ujana imeisha you are not strong anymore akili imechoka your brain is tired umesha kuwa depressed you are already depressed magonjwa yamekuja you are full of diseases maana huwezi kuwa na maisha marefu gerezani because you cannot have long life in the prison yani wanaona kwamba baada ya miaka 40 huyu mtu hawezi kitu tena the assumption is after 40 years this guy cannot do anything nimeshangaa sana i was really surprised kumbe ma lawyers so the lawyers na judges and the judges wanachota hekima kwenye biblia they take wisdom from the bible Musa alivyouwa mmisri when Moses killed the Egyptian alikimbilia jangwani he ran into the wilderness lakini hukumu ya Mungu but the judgment of God kwa sababu Mungu ni mwenye haki kwa watu wote because God is a righteous God to all Mungu alimkatia miaka 40 God gave him 40 years <laughs> shangilia Yesu ukiwa wa kiroho utajua hiyo ni ufunuo mkubwa sana Mungu alimkatia kwa ajili ya uaji miaka 40 jangwani huko because of that murder mbali na wito wake far from his call mbali na watu wote far from any other person miaka 40, 40 years mara nyingi tunasema many a times we say Mungu alikuwa anamtoa mbegu ya Misri God was removing the seed of Egypt. Ni kweli. It is true. Mungu alikuwa anamfundisha njia ya jangwa. God was teaching him the way of the wilderness. Ni kweli. It is true. Lakini kulingana na sheria, but according to the law, kwa sababu amemwaga damu, because he has shed blood. Na Mungu ni Mungu wa haki kwa watu wote. He is God of righteous for everyone. Ilibidi mpango wa Mungu juu ya Musa, the plan of God upon Moses, icheleweshe miaka 40 ya sentence. Had to be delayed for 40 years until he finishes his sentence. Lakini neno la Mungu linasema Lakini Bwana akikuweka huru utakuwa huru kweli kweli Haleluya Kuna miaka ya kupelekwa katika hukumu Katika mateso na jangwa Lakini Mungu but God Nafikiri sheria yake pia ni international. I think his law also is international. Mungu hauwi akiwa na mpango na maisha yako. God cannot kill you when he has plan over your life. Anaweza kukutia katika gereza. He can put you in cell. Kwa miaka fulani. For certain years. Lakini Mungu anahesabu. But God counts. Sheria ya uwaji inasema miaka 40. The law of murder says 40. Itabidi awe awe miaka 40 gereza. So he will have to be in Ile hofu. That fear. Ilimshikilia that was holding him Asiweze kufikiria tena kuhusu wito wake He could not think any more about his call Asiweze kufikiria kuhusu kuwakomboa wana wa Israeli He could not think any more about delivering the Israelites Yeye mwenyewe ni mtumwa wa kuua wa kumwaga damu He himself was a slave of murder Ana hofu na ogopa He had fear is afraid Anakaa katika maisha mabaya He is living in very bad Lakini wema wa Mungu But the goodness of God Baada ya miaka 
years. He was old. He had gray hair. But God said, "Man, I am going to die." But God said, "Forty years are over." Now you can be set free. You can come back to the plan of God. He was walking in those mountains. And he saw the God of heaven coming down from 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 Exodus chapter 3. And God came down like fire. And when he turned to look at the vision, God said, "Now draw nigh and put off your shoes, because where you're standing is a holy ground." And God removed all the shackles. And God said that now your sentence is over. And Moses was the leader. Moses was set free. And then later God told him, "I will send you to know where you're coming from." Hallelujah. Mungu ni mzuri sana. God is so good. Hata kama ulikuwa gerezani. Even if you were in prison. Kuna siku ya kutoka katika gereza. There is a day to come out of your cell. siku ya minyororo ya mtu kuvunjika. There is a day for your chains to be broken. Kuna siku viatu vya hukumu vitatolewa. There is a day the shoes of condemnation shall be taken out. Inatosha sasa. And God say it is enough. Inatosha sasa. It is enough. Itabidi nikutie nguvu tena. Now I will have to strengthen you again. Musa kaogopa. And Moses was afraid. Nitakavoenda huko. When I go there. Nitawaambia ni nani? What am I going to tell Mungu them who you are? Mpia. And God gave him a new heart. Mungu akampa maono tena. God gave him new vision. Kurudi kule alikotolewa. Go back where he came Mana from. Maana alimwambia. Because he told him. Hakuna mtu atakushika tena. Nobody will get hold of you Ambia anymore. Mwenzako. Tell your neighbor. Bwana kikuweka huru. If the Lord sets you free. Hakuna mtu atakuweka ndani tena. Nobody can lock you in Hakuna anymore. Hakuna mtu atakuweka ndani. Nobody can capture Mungu you anymore. Mungu akikuweka huru. If God sets you free. Akasema kifungo chako kimekwish. I say your sentence is over. Be free now. No Pharaoh will lock you anymore. Hakuna magonjwa atakutia ndani tena. No ten. sickness will hold you down anymore. Hakuna njaa itakutia ndani tena. No hunger will hold you down Mano anymore. Hakuna utakuwa huru kweli kweli. Because kweni. you will be free indeed. Hakuogopa Pharaoh. He was not afraid of Pharaoh. Hakuogopa nyumba ya Pharaoh. He was not afraid of the house of Pharaoh. Hakuogopa Misri. He was not afraid of the Egyptians. Kwa sababu alikuwa huru. Because he was free. Alikuwa huru. He was free. Mshangilie Bwana. Shout unto the Lord. Kifungo cha pili The, the second type of sentence ni, ni mnyororo wa kutokuamini This is the type of chain of disbelief Unaweza kuwa mlango uko wazi The door could be open Lakini huamini But you don't believe Ukajifunga minyororo ya kutokuamini And then you will tie yourself under the chains of disbelieving Unafikiri uaje You think murdering Ndio ina kifungo cha miaka 40 Is the one that has 40 year sentence Lakini kutomuamini Mungu But failing to trust in God believing in God Ina cha miaka It also has 40 years sentence Kwa Mungu ni dhambi kubwa sana To God is such a huge sin Unaposhindwa kuamini When you fail to believe Utabaki mtumwa You will remain to be a slave Na hautaweza kutembea katika uhuru wako And you will never be able to walk in your freedom Dhambi ya uwaji the sin of murder ilimzuia Musa miaka 40 hindered Moses and locked him for 40 years ikachelewesha mpango wa Mungu and it delayed the plan of God lakini baada ya miaka 40 but after 40 years mpango wa Mungu kaendelea the plan of God continued hivyo hivyo likewise kutokuamini fail to believe ni mnyororo mkubwa sana it is such a strong chain hesabu 14 numbers 14 Utaweza kusoma sura nzima. You will read the whole chapter. Biblia inasema The Bible says Wana wa Israel, the Israelites, walivoshindwa kuamini Mungu when they failed to believe in God. Na kuona kama hawa wana wa Anak ni wakubwa and to see like the sons of Anak are so strong against them. Kwamba hawataweza kupigana nao that they can never be able to fight against them. Na kuipokea hiyo nchi and to get hold of that land. Wakaanza kunungunika they started to murmur. Na kumnungunikia Mungu and they started to murmur against God. Na kutoli na kulia and they started to cry. Na kusema Mungu ametuleta and to say god has brought us here so that he may destroy us destroy us in this wilderness that's when god said hivyo hivyo mnavosema as the way you say hivyo hivyo itakavyokuwa so shall it be to you kwa hizo siku 40 so for those 40 days when you weren't inspired the land 
They went and surrounded to that land for 40 days. Lakini kwa ajili ya uovu wenu kutokuwa amini na kunungunika. But because of your evil failing to believe in mummery. Siku moja one day italinganishwa na mwaka mmoja. Shall be likened unto one year. Badala ya siku 40 instead of 40 days mtakaja ngwani miaka 40. He will stay in the wilderness for 40 years. Hiyo ilikuwa ni hukumu ya Mungu. That was the judgment of God. Na sheria ya Mungu ikazidi international ikasema wale wote kuanzia miaka 25 kwenda juu. And the law of God went above international law and say for those who are 25 years and above wataishia katika jangwa hiyo kwenye miaka 40. They will die in that wilderness within those 40 years. Ndio hiyo Mr. Van alisema. That's what Mr. Van said. Unakaa gerezani mpaka unakufa. You stay in prison until you die. Watakaa kwenye jangwa watu kuanzia miaka 25 kwenda juu they will stay in the wilderness those who are 25 and above taratibu wataenda wanakufa 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 slowly wanakufa. they will be dying and dying and dying except Caleb na Joshua isipokuwa Caleb and Joshua na wale watoto wote wa uzao huu ambao taisha jangwani all those children of the generation from 25 below biblia inasema bible says hao watakuwa jangwani those shall remain in the wilderness miaka 40 for 40 years wakilipa uovu wa wazazi wao paying the evil of their parents wakiteseka suffering wakielewa rejection yangu ni nini understanding what it means when i say i've rejected them yani kukataliwa na mungu ni nini that is what it means to be rejected by god lakini baada ya miaka 40 but after 40 years mungu atawaruhusu God will allow them. Kifungo chao ki hukumu yao iishe. That their sentence to come to an end. Ili waingie sasa katika hiyo nchi ya ahadi. So that now they may enter into the promised land. Ninachotaka kusema ni nini? What do I want to say here? Wakati unakatiwa hukumu when you are being given a sentence your sentence ni minyororo inakuwa imekufunga ili usiweze kuingia katika ahadi yako kiraisi usually the chains are binding you so that you may not easily enter into your promise lakini but ukimlilia Mungu if you cry unto God ukimtafuta Mungu if you seek God kama Daudi alivomlilia Mungu like the way David cried unto God Mungu anafupisha God will shorten miaka ya hukumu yako the years of your sentence Haleluya. Haleluya. Mr. Van. Brother Van. Wakati mtu yuko guilty alafu baadaye ana anasema ni kweli. Ana anakubali kwamba ni kweli nimefanya. Je, hawampunguzie miaka? When somebody is guilty and then he accepts that indeed I have done this mistake. Don't they cut short the sentence? They yeah. do. They do. Wanafunguza. They cut short the sentence. but it is possible wakiangalia kwamba amemaanisha sio kwamba katiwe miaka wakimchunguza when they when they do the investigation and discover that indeed this guy means what he says he is genuine it's not because he wants the years to be reduced kwamba huyo mtu they analyze they find that he's genuine they can reduce years right kwamba huyo mtu ni mkweli sio kwamba tu anataka apunguziwe hukumu lakini watakapomchunguza na kugundua kwamba kweli anamaanisha wanaweza kumpunguzia miaka. Hiyo hekima wameitoa pia kwenye Biblia. Where did they get that wisdom? They got it from the Bible. Ukimlilia Mungu. If you cry unto God. Na kusema nimekutenda uovu. And you say that I have sinned against you. Na sema Mungu mimi ni mwenye dhambi. He said God I am a sinner. Sifai mbele zako. I am not good before thee. Nimekutendea dhambi. I have sinned against Niyoko, you. Niokoe Mungu. Save me now. Kifungo chako kinarudishwa. Your sentence is being reduced. Sio lazima tuende tena kwenye miaka 40. Not necessary that we should go to 40 years. Sio lazima tuende tena kwenye miaka 20 na ngapi. Not necessary you should go to 20 something Tunatakiwa kumtafuta Mungu. We are supposed to seek God. Na kumlilia Mungu. And to cry unto him. Na kukubali uovu wetu mbele za Mungu. And to admit all the evil that we have done Ili against him. Ya Mungu. So that the grace of God. Na rehema ya Mungu. And the mercies of God. Itende kazi. May be in operation. Kama Mungu. As the way God. Aliweza kuwasikia watu wa Makedonia. God could hear the people of Macedonia. Na kutuma malaika. And to send an angel. Na kufanya Paulo ashuke Makedonia. And to call to go to Macedonia. Na kufungua gereza. And to set the captives free from the Kujifunja funja minyororo ya watu wa gereza. The shackles of those who are in prison. Mungu hatakosa kutusikiliza. God will definitely hear us. Kwa hizi siku 40 za maombi. 40 days of prayer. 
People don't understand why we fast for 40 days. One day can be compared to one year. According to the Bible. 40 days. Can break the chains that would have put you in prison for 40 years. Shout unto the Lord. Ukijipangia siku moja kwa mwaka siku moja kwa mwaka miaka 40 yenye ungekaa kwenye jangwa la njaa jangwa la mateso you, jangwa la dhambi jangwa la, la, la vifungo mbalimbali kwa siku 40 unakuta Mungu anakufungua If you put a day one day as as 40 days then you would have been in prison you would have been in all sorts of problems and sufferings for 40 days or for 40 years but God delivers you once Mungu. you cry unto him. Mungu ni mwema. God is so good. Paulo na Sila. Paul and Silas. Walianza kuomba gerezani. They started to pray in prison. Wokovu wa Mungu kashuka gerezani. And the salvation of God came into the prison cell. Hao wafunga waliokuwa wanajaa huko. And those prisoners who were full in the cells. Mimi sijui walifanya kosa gani. I don't know what was their mistake. Ninachojua. What I know. Watu wa Mungu walivyoomba. When the people of God pray. Watu wa Mungu walivyoomba. When the people of God pray. God heard. And the great shake came in. And the doors of the prison swung open. The Bible say, Everyone's chains got loosed. Not parts or groups of people. Listen to me carefully. It was a group of many prisoners. But when the people of God pray, all those files, God cancels them. Cro who, the one who steals, the one who is an adulterer, the one who lied, all those files, God cancels them. And the chains that were binding them, every one of them, every one of them, these chains were loosened. Christians of Zion, you believe the scriptures all everyone. If you have been bound by the chain of disbelieving, today, God is canceling that chain. That file is being canceled. That chain is being broken. And I remember the door is open. Now, if the door is open and the chains have been broken, what is next? Mbio. Run. Because if the Lord sets you free, you shall be freed indeed. Praise God. If the Lord sets you free, nobody can bind you anymore. If the Lord releases you, no judge can rise against you, praise God. No Pharaoh can rise against you. No age can rise against you. Chains of everyone were broken. Do you know we have various chains? It could be that you're not sinning anymore. But you have fear. You have doubt. Who are many? Say, can God really do this? It's not by power. No by might. But by the Spirit of God. Washington. When we were in that conference in Washington, there's a song that really blessed my heart. This is how it goes. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. 
to break all the chains kuvunja minyororo yote kuvunja minyororo yote kuvunja minyororo yote to break all the chains kuvunja minyororo yote break all the chains kuvunja minyororo yote break all the chains kuvunja minyororo yote hebu tujaribu kuimba there is power in the name of jesus there is power in the name of jesus to break all the chains break to break all the chains to break all the chains wakati unafanya prophetically na ujitabiria hivyo hivyo as you're doing prophetically prophesy on your own too tuanze tena there is power In the name of Jesus there is power in the name of Jesus to break all the chains 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 There is power in the name of Jesus There is power in the name of Jesus to break all the chains 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 hiyo ndio habari njema ambayo ninao that's the good news that i have sijali minyororo gani imefunga maisha yako i don't care what kind of a chain that is binding your life na sijali hukumu ilikuwa ni ndefu kiasi gani i don't care how long the sentence was ninachojua what i know tunavomuita bwana yesu as you call upon the lord jesus anafuta hiyo hatia na miaka yake cancels all those condemnations and the years anashuka na kuvunja minyororo yote comes down and break every chain anaivunja He loosened everything. And if he sets you free, you become free indeed. Hata kama mifupa yako imevunjwa vunjwa. Even if your bones have been crushed. Sikiliza nikwambie. Listen let me tell you. Yohana aliangalia. John looked. Akasema. And he said. Angalia ninaona mwana kondoo wa Mungu. Behold the lamb of God. Aliyeiondoa dhambi ya ulimwengu. Take us away the sins of the world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yohana 1:29. Akasema angalia ninaiona. Behold. Mwana kondoo wa Mungu. The lamb of God. Aliandaliwa. Who was prepared? Kuiondoa. To take away. Dhambi ya ulimwengu. The sins of the world. Yesu. Jesus. Alikufa. Died. Ili kuondoa hatia. So that he may take away the condemnation. Ambao ilikuwa imeandikwa kwa ajili ya maovu. That guilty was that was written for the people. And the things that we did. Na hatia tulizokatiwa. And the guilt that were counted on us. Yesu. Jesus. Pamoja na kwamba mifupa yetu ilivunjwa. With the fact that our bones were broken. Yeye he himself. Alitoa uhai wake. He gave his life. Mwana kondoo wa Mungu. The lamb of God. Alimwaga damu yake. He shed his blood. Na hiyo damu and that blood ndio ina uwezo wa kufuta dhambi has the power to remit sin kwa sababu dhambi isipovutwa hatia ipo because if the sin is not being erased away then the guilt still Na remains na hukumu ipo and the sentence is there lakini hiyo damu ya Yesu but the blood of Jesus inaweza kusafisha dhambi it can wash away sin ili minyororo ya maisha yetu ivunjike so that the chains of our lives can be broken ndio maana biblia inasema alikufa kwa ajili yetu that's why the bible says that he died for us maana alitoa uhai wake because he gave his life sikiliza operation inavyofanyika listen how the operation is being done Mifupa imevunjwa vunjwa. The bones were crushed. Hamna nguvu tena. No power anymore. Lakini no Yesu anymore, but Jesus alitoa damu yake. He gave his blood. Na Biblia inasema and The Bible says Damu ni uhai. The blood is life. Damu ni uhai. Blood is life. Damu ni uhai. Blood is life. Na ndani ya uhai wa Kristo and in the life of Christ una nguvu. There is power. 
Kuna nguvu. There is power. Kuna nguvu. There is power. Ndio maana alikuwa anapigwa. That's why he was being beaten. Damu zinamwagika. The blood would be shed. Anapigwa. He was being beaten. Damu zinamwagika. The blood would be shed. Anaendelea kutoa uhai wake wote. He continued to let his life go. Damu zilimwagika. The blood was shed. Zaina mbali mbali. Of different types. Na alivyokuwa msalabani. And when he was at the cross. Bado kulikuwa damu imebaki ndani. There was still some blood in him. Ndivyo alivyompiga mkuki. And when they pierced him aside. Damu ya mwisho yote katoka. The last blood came out yote oh paka toni ya mwisho even the last drop ikatoka it came out uhai wake wote all of his life akautoa kwa ajili ya wewe na mimi gave it for you and i kipo akasema yote yamekwisha that's when he said it is finished ile damu that blood mchana wa leo this afternoon unaweza kuita you can call upon the blood na ukiita damu hiyo and if you call upon the blood utapata uhai you shall receive life na uzima wa kristo and life of christ na hiyo damu and that blood itavuta hukumu yote shall he raise all the judgments that's why atakuwa amekuweka huru you would have set you free minyororo itapasuka tavunjika chains would be loosened na utatoka mwenyewe and you shall come out yourself ukiwa huru being free utatoka you will come out maana gereza iko wazi because the prison doors are open na vifungo vyote viko wazi all the shackles are loose utatoka leo you will come out today 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 utatoka you will come out today uamini tu just believe uamini utatoka leo just believe you will come out hallelujah hallelujah yule aliyekuwa anafunga gereza the one who was taking care of the milango milango iko wazi when he saw the doors were open akaona minyororo yote iko imefunguka and when he saw all the chains were broken akachukua kisu ajiue he took a knife he wanted to kill Lakini himself paulo, but paul said napenda paulo sana i love paul ingekuwa labda wewe na mimi if it was maybe you and i nimesema tena ujinyonge na ujiue you would have said you better kill yourself ingiza na hiyo kisu haraka haraka continue do it fast lakini Paulo akasema But Paul said hey, Hang on Usijitende uovu Don't don't harm Usijiwe. yourself Usijiue Don't kill yourself Tuko hapa wote baba We are all still here none of us is out Akashangaa And he was amazed Alivoshangaa And he was amazed Bible inasema The Bible says Akatoka nje pamoja na Paulo He went outside with Paul Watu wa Makedonia People of Macedonia Wakuu wa Makedonia Those leaders of Macedonia Walimfunga Paulo They locked Paul in prison Lakini But Kama Mungu hakukutia minyororo If God has not put chains on you Ingereza si kitu That prison is nothing Mungu aliruhusu uingie huko kufanya kazi God allowed you to go in there to do the work Milango ikafunguka The door swung open Minyororo ikavunjika The chains were broken Paulo akatoka nje And Paul came out Na yule mlinzi akatoka naye And the prison keeper went went out with him what must i do that i may be born again ah paulo akamwambia hiyo rais that one is simple just believe in the lord jesus christ you shall be born again not only you but you and your family say really they say let's go and in my home let's go and they went these are the people who went prison and the prison keeper they went together they went together until to the house of the prison keep and the, the, the gospel was preached the gospel was preached and the prison keeper got born again and his entire house was born again and all of them were baptized shout unto the lord mpango wa mungu juu ya makedonia ukaanza kufunuliwa hatua moja kwa nyingine the plan of god over macedonia started to be revealed one step after the other lydia na nyumba yake wakabatizwa lydia and her home they were baptized yule kijakazi akakombolewa the damsel was set free gereza ikabomolewa the prison was opened minyororo ikafunjika chains were broken mlinzi akaokoka the prison keeper got born again and yake ikaokoka his family got born Wote again they were all baptized hiyo ndio ilikuwa mpango wa makedonia that was the plan of god over macedonia hallelujah 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 ilikuwa emergency makedonia it was an emergency plan in Wafungo macedonia wafungwa wakati wa hatia zao zifutwe and all the prisoners were set free maana paulo ameingia kwenye mji because paul is in the city wote wawekwe huru then they all will be set free kwa nini kanisa isiwekwe huru why can't the church be set free then? if the prisoners were set free why not the church 
Listen now. I love the Lord. When they were outside, the Bible says that uh, the, the leader of that prisoner he started to just wash away those wounds. The wounds of well, because he was beaten. Those who hurt you. Woo, praise God. <laughs> <laughs> those who hurt you they are the ones who are going to soothe you God will allow them to wash away your wounds and treat them receive it in Jesus name and they were washed and washed when they were done and they prepared a nice meal <laughs> not only they will Wash away your wounds, but they will feed you. Receive it in Jesus' name. They treated them and then they fed them. Listen. The following day, the Bible says, those men, the leaders of the city, they sent their officers. They said, please tell those people of God, be, they are free and tell them to go and listen to what Paul said are they the ones who opened the prison <laughs> are they the ones who broke the chains how do they declare freedom whereas these guys were already free